Sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. This is Bruce, G4ABX. Uh, I want to talk to you this morning about a new range of videos that uh, I'll be releasing over the next weeks and months. And it is to look at solar powering my amateur radio shack. Uh, I say amateur radio shack. It, it's a solar power solution for any um, lowish requirement, you know, something 500 watts to a kilowatt or something like that. So it, it doesn't matter if you're not going to power an amateur radio shack, you could, you could power your caravan, your recreation vehicle, your camper, whatever. Uh, it really doesn't matter. You know, the shed in the garden, uh, you could power with this uh, activity, with this technique, with this technology. So um, it, it's extremely adaptable. But a little introduction, first of all, as to uh, why I've decided to do this. Uh, electricity cost in the UK and in France, uh, just ridiculous. Um, UK is the craziest, but um, I think my bill's gone up three times in, in the last six months, um, which is just crazy and, and is frankly unsustainable for people on a fixed income. It's just ridiculous. So. I decided what I would do would be to solar power my amateur radio shack. Um, I've spent quite a lot of time, probably the last three or four months, researching this project. And I've done quite a lot of testing, um, quite a lot of investigation, so that hopefully you don't need to. <laughs> um, you can spend a lot or a little and your results will be the good or not so good, depending on, frankly, how much you spend and, and what equipment you, you choose to put together. Uh, this is very much a, a do-it-yourself thing. I've done it, anybody could do it, pretty much. And essentially, I'm providing you with a blueprint. Uh, you could expand it, uh, you could reduce it, uh, but basically my system is pretty simple. A couple of 200 watt solar panels, a 375 watt mains inverter, um, about 160 amp hours of battery storage, something like that. Uh, the battery storage, I, I already had two 30 amp hour uh, LiFePo4 cells, which I used for my amateur radio activities um, when I go portable parks on the air and the like. Um, but they're not being heavily used, so I thought this would be quite a, a good way of pressing them into, uh, shall we say, more continuous usage. <clears throat> I don't need to worry about it because uh, the LifePo4 technology, uh, three or 4,000 recharges is, uh, is fairly typical, um, up to 5,000 with some of them, so I'm not worried about wearing the batteries out. I've chosen a particular vendor for most of the electronics associated with this, and, and that vendor is a company called Victron. A couple of reasons for this. One, they appear remarkably well-made, um, well-designed pieces of equipment. And also, and this is quite important to me, they provide software for the Raspberry Pi to do all the control systems and provide you with the information uh, that running their equipment enables. So I don't have to spend £500 on their bit of kit to do it. I've already got a spare Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi is part of my amateur radio activities uh, and you always keep a spare. So I got a spare one of those, so that's cost me nothing. The software they provide is completely free and it gives fantastic control remote control and readability of all the parameters associated with solar power uh, on something as simple as your smartphone, if that's what you want to use, or a tablet or a dedicated display, you, you choose. So without any more ado, I shall now run through the basic elements of this solar powered shack. Um, and as I say, this will be the first of a sequence of videos. So. I hope you find this interesting. Okay, so here's a shot of all the components on the board. Um, and what I intend to do is to mount this so the board will be fixed to the wall in my shack um, and the batteries will be on the floor underneath the, uh, the board so we can have close connection between batteries and charge controllers, loads, etc, etc. 
So I'll run through now essentially what we've got and, uh, and why I've got these elements. So starting, um, the first item of note is an isolation switch and a couple of fuses. Um, it's always advisable to fuse and isolate your solar panels. Uh, of course, if the sun's shining, or even if it's not, your solar panels will be generating energy. And if you need to do anything with your system, you need to isolate those. Otherwise, you, you could have, you know, 100 volts or so um, coming in from these panels if they're in series and you've got enough of them. I only have two at the moment, but even so, that'll be 50 or 60 volts of, uh, of solar power. So, from this breaker box, as it were, it moves into the solar charge controller. Now this is an MPPT 100-30. That means it'll cope with 100 volts and it'll deliver 30 amps of charge to your battery. We come out of the solar charge controller into another set of breakers uh, and these isolate the output from the charge controller to the, the rest of your equipment. Um, and I'll talk a bit about that in a moment. Out of this breaker box, we come down to the main fuse box. Um, this is a multi-fuse, got four outputs, a bus bar for positive and a bus bar for negative. Uh, you'll notice when you start looking at solar that um, all kinds of bits and pieces seem to cost a fortune. <laughs> this is probably one of the key monitoring parts of the system. This is a, a Victron a smart shunt. It is quite bright. Um, intelligent that is, not in terms of temperature or colour, but it, it is quite bright um, when combined with its uh, display. Uh, we have Bluetooth enabled with all of this and it will provide quite a lot of information as I'll show you as we go through and do the build. Here we have a 12 volt, um, I think this is a 20 amp uh, converter. When I say converter it takes pretty much anything from 8 to 25 volts input and delivers you 13.8 volts output. 13.8 is important from an amateur radio perspective because most of our amateur radio equipment these days is designed to run directly off 13.8 volts. Uh, batteries from the solar charger, they can run anything from kind of, I don't know, 12, 13 to 14 and a half volts. Uh, so where you have loads that are critical, then it's worth thinking about one of these devices. They're pretty inexpensive and they're quite efficient in terms of converting the, the volts and amps. The two components next to it, a little timer box and a resistor, are used to pre-charge the capacitors in the inverter. Now this is quite a small inverter 12 volts input, 375 watts of AC output. Um, it provides the AC here on the output socket. But one of the characteristics of inverters is they have some large capacitors inside them. And you can't instantaneously change the state of charge of capacitor. So if I were to just simply connect this across the battery I'll get some nasty sparks and may well damage the inverter. So the resistor and the little timer, uh, only five seconds or so, essentially puts a resistor in series with the supply to the inverter and gives those capacitors the opportunity to charge up without receiving the full load. Um, and then once that's done, um, after the five seconds of pre-charge, uh, you, you're, you're on to fully operate the thing. Here we have a, a battery switch. Uh, this is a switch that will cope with two different batteries. I am going to use two different types of battery. Uh, and a couple of single fuses. Uh, one will go to the 30 amper hour batteries that will be 12 volts um, wide in parallel. The other will go to a new battery I've purchased, a 100 amper hour, uh, well 105 amper hour LiPo 4 battery. That will separately fuse them before they go to the switch. Out of the switch They'll go to the smart shunt, out of the smart shunt um, they'll go to uh, the loads. And in terms of the loads, the 13.8 volt supply will be fed to its own little fuse box so that uh, I can fuse 
all the outputs. Um, I've got quite a few fairly low power loads, um, you know, half an amp, an amp, something like that. So having a, a, an additional fuse box is, I think, entirely sensible from that perspective. There's a 30 amp breaker there that'll go in series with the supply to the inverter. 30 amps, I think, will be enough. Um, if I keep getting premature uh, <laughs> uh, breaking, shall we say, I might have to get a 50 amp version, but I think the 30 amp will be fine. And the final little black box is uh, the ubiquitous Raspberry Pi. This will be the control heart of this system. Um, Victron, and, and all credit to them, have got some wonderful monitoring hardware and software, but it's pretty expensive. The, the Victron monitoring kit for this will probably cost as much as everything you see on this board. So Victron have done us a great favour and provided software for the Raspberry Pi. So all of their monitoring software, I think pretty much all of it, is available as a, as a free download to be loaded onto a Raspberry Pi. And as I happen to have a spare Raspberry Pi, um, a Raspberry Pi 4 this is, um, it doesn't cost me anything. Well, it doesn't cost me anything for this project. <laughs> it wasn't free in the beginning. So that's pretty much it in terms of uh, the components for the solar panel um, power supply, shall we say. And I think this should give us several hundred watts of power. Uh, one of the advantages of amateur um, radio equipment is that it pretty much, as I've said, all runs off 13.8 volts. So I can take quite a chunk of that, certainly from a main rig, directly from the battery. So I don't need the inverter to invert up from 12 volts to mains voltage, then plug a power supply in to get back down to 13.8 volts. I'll be able to do that directly from the battery. And this means I don't need such a powerful inverter. 375 watts should be quite sufficient to run the things that I need that I'm not going to uh, experiment with really for 12 volts. And that's the monitors, and I have two of those computer monitors. Uh, it's the computers themselves. I have uh, a Windows machine and a Mac, and they'll all run off, 12, off this inverter. And other silly things like soldering iron, um, that'll run off the inverter, and my small heat gun uh, will run off the inverter. So, providing I don't try and connect them all up at the same time, which is unlikely, um, 375 watts uh, should be quite sufficient. Inverters are quite expensive, and this is kind of an entry-level thing, cost you, I don't know, 120, 130 pounds. Um, I bought this one second-hand, although it's mint. Um, I bought that fella as well second-hand, although it's mint. So, um, there are lots of bargains that are available because lots of people, as I probably will, end up upgrading their solar systems. So there's always good quality solar kit. Uh, and, and that's the final thing I'll say just for the moment. Good quality is really important. If you're delving into a technology domain that isn't your norm, <coughs> then fighting with poor quality kit is frustrating beyond belief. So I decided to go after lots of research with Victron as my main source of expertise and power uh, because they have a, a fantastic reputation. And whereas I could have reduced the cost considerably by using some unnamed Chinese brand, that's just too many variables when you're starting a new project in a domain that you're not comfortable with. Now, maybe over the years, uh, I will get comfortable and be happy to look at other, um, shall we say, slightly less well-known bits and pieces. So we may test a few solar devices from time to time. But there you go. That's kind of an introduction from me. And um, this will create a video, hopefully. And I think that's about it. So my very best wishes to you all, and I hope you have a great day. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time.